and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how you can choose your motherboard in uh, your gaming PC, right? Now, when building a gaming PC, everybody talks about, you know, the graphics card and the processor and all that stuff, but nobody talks about the thing that literally connects all of those together, the motherboard. So I thought I would create an in-depth guide on how to choose the motherboard for your gaming PC. But first, we need to be sure to use the link in the description down below to buy any of the motherboards that you may decide to buy after watching this video. Because if you do that, we do get a small commission with no additional cost to you from Amazon. So go down there to the first link down below and it will take you off to Amazon where all of the motherboards should be bought. R really, you can get some good prizes on motherboards over there. And and uh, yeah, if you buy through that link, it does give us a little commission, so thanks in advance for doing that. Okay, so what are the main things you need to look at when you're going to buy a motherboard for a gaming PC? Well, here's the deal. You need to make sure it is compatible with your CPU. If the motherboard isn't compatible with your CPU, literally nothing else matters, right? That is the most important thing, that the CPU you're buying fits in the motherboard that you're buying. And this is actually pretty easy. If you go and look at like the product description or whatever on the motherboard you're buying, I guarantee it will either list all the compatible processors out, right? Like AMD Ryzen 5 2200X, yada, 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 all the way down through the line. Or it'll say something like Intel 8th gen processor supported, meaning any 8th generation Intel CPU will work in that motherboard. In addition to that, something like PC Part Picker linked down below will not even show you CPUs that aren't compatible with your motherboard and vice versa. It won't show you motherboards that aren't compatible with your CPU as long as you turn on their compatibility filter, which is on by default. So if you're looking to, you know, make sure everything's compatible, go over there and check that out because it'll do that for you. And once you've got the correct motherboard for your CPU, we need to look into RAM because every motherboard supports a different amount of RAM. Your options here are basically 32 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of RAM. And if you want to know exactly how much RAM you need for a gaming PC, you can actually check out the eye at the top of the screen right up there and it will show you everything you need to know. I'll walk you through RAM and gaming PCs and all of that stuff. It's, it's a great video. One of the favorites I've actually done in this series of how to pick your own PC parts. So yeah, go check that one out. But in regards to your motherboard, the choice is pretty easy. A budget motherboard is only going to support Support 32 gigabytes of RAM. If you're on a very tight budget, this will be fine. This will be enough. We're a long way away from gaming requiring over 32 gigabytes of total RAM. And as long as you can upgrade to that, right, you're fine as long as that's the max a game needs. And a game is not going to need that. Most don't even need 8 gigabytes of RAM. So 32 gigabytes of RAM is fine most of the time for gaming. With that being said though, if you were looking to do more than gaming, say you're looking to stream to Twitch or make YouTube videos, then you will need some more RAM and 64 gigabytes is probably what you want to go with in a motherboard and you're also probably going to be spending a bit more money on your build in general. So the money's there to get a motherboard that's a little nicer and is going to support 64 gigabytes of total RAM. By getting a motherboard with that much RAM, it gives you more options in the future. It's very unlikely you'll run out the gate with 64 gigabytes. But knowing that you can upgrade in the future, say when Adobe does their RAM killing update, which they'll eventually probably do, that is what matters, right? The ability to upgrade in the future when that happens and keep your PC relevant instead of just kind of having to sit by the wayside with your 32 gigs and uh, be like, uh, I don't have enough to edit videos anymore and you have to buy an entire new system and it's, it's just a mess or at least a new motherboard and then that just kind of trickles down the line, right? So if you are building a very, very cheap, low budget, just gaming build, 32 gigabytes of max RAM on your motherboard, it's gonna be A-OK. -okay. However, if you're gonna be doing more than just gaming with your system, spend a few extra bucks and get Get a motherboard that can support 64 gigabytes of RAM just to give you more expandability in the future. After you've got your CPU and your RAM figured out, we need to talk about PCI and PCIe expansion. Any gaming motherboard that you ever consider buying should have at least two PCI and PCIe slots. At least usually one PCI slot and one PCIe slot. One basically for your graphics card, right? And one for just in case you wanted to add in a Wi-Fi card or something like that. That's what PCI and PCIe slots are for. Expansion cards. And if you're looking to add in a lot of expansion cards, say a capture card, a audio driver style, you know, like sound blaster card, a Wi-Fi card, maybe you're gonna even add in some NVMe storage this way, which we'll talk more about later. In that case, you need some more options for expansion. So before you pull the trigger on any motherboard, make sure it's going to have enough PCI and PCIe slots 
for the amount of expansion cards you're going to have. If you're going to have a GPU, a sound card, a capture card, and a Wi-Fi card, you'll need at least four expansion slots to accommodate that, right? If you're going to add in another GPU in Crossfire or SLI, guess what? You're going to need five slots. You want to make sure you have enough to accommodate everything. And you also want to make sure you have enough space. Big graphics cards, right? The modern gaming graphics cards, really, all can sometimes overlap another PCI or PCIe slot, thus making that one useless. So I would try to go a little higher if you could. Say you might use up to five slots, maybe try to get a motherboard with six or even eight, something like that, to make sure you have enough room for everything to fit in there. And from here, there's actually just one more thing we need to talk about when it comes to choosing a motherboard, and that is NVMe M.2 storage. Now, this is a great way to get some speedy, lightning fast storage on your system, right? I mean, I'm talking massively faster than even normal SSDs, and I can understand the appeal to getting one, but you need to make sure your motherboard is natively compatible for it if you want the best results. And this is going to up your price a bit on your motherboard. So if you plan on using MVME storage anytime in the future, right? Anytime in the future, you want to make sure the motherboard supports it at the gate. So that's just something to note, something to look out for. If you plan on doing that expansion in the future, you can. If you don't, then you're fine. Now, I know from this point, we could go a lot more in depth with a lot more little things. But here are the things that if you're building a gaming PC in 2018, or really anytime after 2018, you need to have these in your system. So just make sure that any motherboard you buy has USB 3.0 support, at least six SATA ports for any storage expansion you want to do. I know that sounds like a lot, but that's about standard for motherboards these days. So unless you're getting a really small form factor motherboard, you need to make sure it has six SATA slots. And honestly, if you're getting a really small form factor, make sure it has three. But most people, you want to make sure it has six slots for hard drives. You also want to make sure it has the ability to power at least two of your case fans in addition to your CPU fan. So it needs three slots for fans minimum. If it can have more than that, that would be great. If your case has more fans than that and your motherboard only has support for up to three fans, you can get, you know, a fan controller and expand it out and do all that stuff if you want. But if your motherboard's compatible with all of your fans out of your case out of the box, it kind of all works out. So yeah, make sure it has at least three or at least enough fan slots for your case. And of course, there's one more thing that every gaming motherboard needs, and that's a bit of LED lighting. I mean, what is a gaming motherboard without some sick LEDs on there? No, you don't need LED lighting, but everything else I mentioned here, you do need on your motherboard if you're building a modern gaming PC. So that's that. That's how you can choose your motherboard. That's what to look out for. And at this point, you should kind of have all the questions answered. You know what CPU you're getting, you know what motherboard you need for that CPU, you know how much RAM you're looking for, you know how many PCI expansion slots you need, and guess what? You even know if you're going to be using NVMe storage or not to be able to make sure your motherboard's either compatible for that or not compatible from that. But there you have it. Did I miss something? I probably didn't. If I did, post it in the comment section down below and I'll be like, hey, I missed this. You should totally consider this when you buy your motherboard. So yeah, let me know that in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome tech videos like this every single week. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown Tech and I'm out, guys. Peace.